Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Scriptures and Stories podcast, where we bring meaningful stories and powerful scriptures. Today, I have the extreme privilege and honor to bring my friend Sean McGuire on for the not first time, but the second time Hi. onto the podcast to just speak over us, share your knowledge, your insight, your wisdom. Dude, you've been impacting so many lives here in Oklahoma City. Amen. Yeah, God and blessed us. Yes, including uh, my life. You've been yeah. a mentor for me. Uh, leading your family well, loving your family well, but also just running this this crazy thriving business here Amen. in Oklahoma City. So I just wanted to pick your brain and talk to you a little sure. bit about a lot of the concerns from the people uh, in our podcast space, yeah. our audience. Uh, relationship problems are big. They are big. And we want to talk about some of those things day after day, just to conclude real quick before we get into the questions. Yeah. We've been... I've just been thinking personally, you have so many people for, from so many different walks of life sure. walking in here every single day with so many different levels of brokenness, divorce, or you know, torn relationships, families being divided. I want to really just hear your heart, bro, on just what that looks like for you every single day, uh, just walk in with people. So or, what I do is every morning I get up really early and I spend time with God no matter what's going on, whether it's a lot of time or a little bit of time. And I recalibrate my mind and I just dedicate the day to him and I ask mm. the Holy Spirit to guide and That's help good. me navigate my life to love my family, to serve my people well. And then really I, I break all soul ties again and I just plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, my body, so that I can start clean yeah. and I can love from a place of health and healing and hope and not out of what happened yesterday. Got it. And that's really how I calibrate my day. Then, then on my way to work. I pray for the people that are on my schedule. Yeah. And you know, if I ever have a big issue or somebody's got something going on that I'm really tuned into and I really feel motivated and they need more prayer, yeah. then I'll do that before I leave. But on my way every day, I pray for the day. I pray for the people. I see them in my mind. I imagine yeah. them doing well. And I pray that into existence. And then I walk in and I'm ready to love, to serve, to encourage. Yeah. And here's the thing. I meet everybody where they're at. I get to it's know really them. Good. I get to know. So if you came in, I would get to know you. I would love to hear your story. I would love to know how you mm. got to where you're at, the experiences that you've had, yeah. how you've dealt with them, your family that you grew up with, the family that you have now, the friends that surround you, yes. the career that you're in, whether it's a homeschool mom like us or whether you have a thriving social media <laughs> empire in the no, making for Jesus, no, for Jesus like you. Yeah. And I really use that platform wow. to connect. And that, that one element about how I practice and how I teach the people that I mentor at our, at our practice, New Vision Counseling, yeah, to yeah. love and serve, helps so many people move up. Wherever they're at, you move up because somebody's finally seen the real you. You don't have to come in with a facade. Yeah, You get to come in as the authentic you. It's we good. help bring that person out. Because, you know, God only deals with authenticity. Yeah, come on now. The devil Sean. deals in deception. Now. He deals in lies. <laughs> he deals in darkness. Yeah. He deals in McDonald's, which is fake food. Come on. And anything that's fake and is an imposter will always keep you behind True. the curve of what God has called you to live in front and with him. And in. Sean, I think it's so important. This was crazy because it's a part of my devotion yeah. today is that it's important that we understand the importance of having a godly perspective on perfection. Amen. Our perfection is Christ. It's that's not right. anything that we do, you know, but it's him. It's him. And that's something I've been trying to beat in my head. You mess up a thousand times, <laughs> but just be vulnerable to God. Confess it to him. And he wants that's to renew my challenge. strength. Yeah, he wants to renew me. That's, you yeah. know, perfection is an issue that a lot of people are struggling with. I've been working on this people-pleasing mm -hmm. seminar. I mean, uh, I started out. Remember I told you yeah, like, yeah. Like last year? Yeah, it that's was, one of my big problems like in the past I've yeah. had to work on is I know. pleasing people. I just know. wanted to be there. You were excited. Time, anytime Remember how call. excited you were? Yes, man. You yes. were so excited. Like, do you <laughs> have it done yet? You, so I, I was planning on about 10 different sessions to do on <laughs> video and have some content. When I got to about 40, yeah. I said, I need to pause and I need to do something wow. else. Because wow. there's so many people that come in with that exact thing of pleasing people. Mm. And, and also, you talked about something that's huge as well that I struggle with, and it's perfectionism. Wow. And for many years, I said, I don't struggle with perfectionism because I know I can't be perfect. I just want to be the best that I can be. True, true. Excellent. 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 And, and, and perfection can paralyze you. 
What's the difference between those two? Excellent and perfection. So excellence. So 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 many people see perfection as a as a destination that you get to right now, whereas excellence is a is a character. Mm-hmm. It's something that you live. So if you're going to show up to love somebody, you love them in an excellent way. Wow. That doesn't mean you don't say something that you regret. That doesn't mean that you don't make a mistake. Mm. That doesn't mean that you don't even fail. Wow. In a yeah. relationship situation or opportunity, but you come back with excellence of hey, I am so sorry. Will you forgive yeah. me? I know I got triggered and I was angry and my response was hurtful, but you forgive me. Yeah. That's a person of excellence, whereas perfection yeah. will do one of two things. They will ignore the problem because they can't tolerate imperfections and they'll yeah. act like you're the problem. Or two, they'll they'll, they'll, they'll run away and deny it. They'll either yeah. physically wow. leave the relationship or they'll practically pretend it never happened and just move on. Ain't that something? See, check this out. I think of excellent. Think of the root word of excellent, that excel, the excel. Mm-hmm. You're taking the initiative to do what's right. That's really good. You know, and if you think of perfection, it's just about, hey, in and of myself, I'm good. I don't got to worry about nothing. <laughs> I don't care how they feel. You, they do their thing. Yeah. I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. It's just pride. It's rooted in pride, the opposite. And it's fear, of, too. Yeah, Perfectionism yeah, yeah. is a solution for a lot of people for insecurities and for having failures and flaws and issues in their life. Yeah. Instead of really addressing the issues that they have and walking through with courage and authenticity, they try to pretend something is better than it is. Mm. And so they put that out. I see this a lot in relationships. Now, one of the things that you can flip as a reframe in your mind, yeah. instead of going for perfection, something that's helped me a lot as part of my statements of faith which is some people call unconditional statements of positive regard or yeah. positive statement, whatever you want to call it. I call them statements of faith. Yeah. It's me speaking life into my future that I want to live in. Come on. And it's perfection. We need to back it up and say it's progress, not perfection. That's That really achieves the, the works and, pro- and the purposes of God. Wow. It's progress, Woo. not perfection, that achieves the works and the purposes of God. And I got to say God. this, Paul. I don't consider Paul. myself as if I arrive, but one thing I do, one, one thing, thing I do, forget, forget what is about by, the past and straining towards what, what is, is ahead. ahead. He just said I was there. And he doesn't, you know, you he know said, what? He also didn't say, he didn't say I sleep in on Saturdays because I only work 40 <laughs> hours a week. That's not in the Bible, by the way. Yeah, he said, yeah. I, I strain, I, I run, I run. Wow. Excellence. I run I as run. to win the race. To win the Look, race. Look, he didn't say I, w- I run as to get a participation medal. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> he didn't say he runs to get a participation medal. Wow, he wow. Said, I want to win. You understand? Yeah, what come I- on. I want to win. Paul said, you feel me? That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> Ball it. Ball-headed and everything. Paul <laughs> said, you feel me? <laughs> he what? ran. Okay. And I think that's a lot of the issue we have today. <laughs> People think it's an either or. Yeah. But in reality, yeah. it's an and. Come it's on. A, it's a... We don't have to just stay back here and say, oh, I'm not a perfectionist. You need to show me grace. Yeah. Uh, Paul was running to win the True, race. To win and, it. But, but it's also, well, I, if I can't do it perfectly, then I'm out. I'm not yeah. even going to try. I know and for that's me, sad. A lot of I've people been inhibited on, come on. in a lot of situations my whole life. Yeah. Because I feared what people thought. Mm. I thought, I'm not going to get up and speak. I would never do an interview like this yeah. with somebody like you that's so exceptional. Because I would have been afraid that you'd ask me a question. Because, look, I don't know what he's going to ask, by the way. Just throw that out there. I have an idea. <laughs> but he said, between Revelations and Genesis, yeah, it's true. a fair game. So that's fair about game. what I got. That's it. That's it. But but I was afraid. And if I couldn't do it perfect, I wouldn't want to do it at all. Wow. Because I didn't want to look stupid. How many people out there today are struggling with going forward with what God has called them to do, position you to do because of the fact that you, or the lack that you won't be perfect. That's so hard. Wow. People come into counseling constantly, which is why I know I keep going back to this people pleasing. Yeah. But when I, when I really got into that program that I was going to develop, it really was at 40, 50. And I'm like, this is a 34, 40 hour program. Yeah. And I was going to make it a five hour, two hour, one hour, yeah. just multiple sessions with a lot of goals. But because daily I see people come in with these fears and they manifest through perfectionism, wow. they manifest through people pleasing, that I said, man, I gotta, I, I, there's so much more content of the Bible, True. of practical strategies of how to help people like they, they would if you came into my office and how our team would help. Mm. Is, is We unlock the freedom that comes. Yeah. From, you don't have to be perfect, brother. There's already That's somebody good. that did. Jesus. There's already somebody that did. Jesus, and come we, on. And, and the devil from day one has tried to get us to usurp, to take out 
God from his position wow. of father, of, of the lover of wow. our soul, of we are enough because we show up, not because we've done something. Yeah. And if and if we can go back and say, God, you said we're enough, good, and I'm going to validate that through my words, through my thoughts, through my feelings, mm. through my friends, through my books, through my music, through all these different social media outlets, then slowly, but divinely and surely, your mind will begin to be transformed yeah, by yeah, the washing good. of his word, no matter what vehicle yeah. it comes to. Because we have so many ways to get to a, de- a destination today. Yeah, Air, yeah. plane, plane boat for you, you running like a madman. Yeah, right. I mean, all kinds yeah, of right. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's such, such a strong, strong word. I want to sort of... This is a good transition play, Sean, just to get more into some relational things. Yeah, people love relationships. Forward. Yes, yes. That's something that I just sent out a text message or actually a, a post, social media post on Twitter and Facebook last night for people needing prayer requests. And I got a crazy response. Really? A lot of I people? I set out my phone number. I learned that from Bob Goff. But I set out <laughs> my phone number just to be available wow. to people. And my Bob phone Goff blew stories. up. Yeah. Stories, about man. 80 text messages. Wow, just like that. And 80% of them 80%. were people dealing with relational issues. So this is timely for the wow. audience that's going to hear this. You want to hear something wild? Yeah. Our whole practice, when we were when I started out, I said, Lord, what do you want me to focus on? Like, what is your vision? What, what exactly? And so I did anxiety for a while. Wow. I was a specialist in helping parents navigate the waters of childhood and would go to schools and did all kinds of things. And God, OCD, yeah. specialized in almost everything at some point in my career. Wow. And the thing I, I landed on was marriage. Do you know why? Mm, tell me why, you get You get the couple to be rightly dividing God's word and living it out practically through their thoughts, their words, their behaviors, mm-hmm. you'll change the society, Come on. starting with the family. So wow. you'll deal with the anxiety. You'll deal with the stress. You'll yeah. deal with the, the business leader that could be excellent instead of greedy. Yeah. You'll deal with the mom who's going to raise kingdom warriors true. instead of people that are sitting on the couch eating bonbons and playing video games Yeah, true. at 30 years old. True. So I'm just saying, Profoundly huge. Well, you're eighty percent you've experienced. Yeah. That's what I experience in practice. Every day. Wow. Eighty percent of the things people come in for are relationships. Relation- if not Crazy. ninety, maybe ninety-five percent or higher, <laughs> it's gonna be a relationship issue. Check With this out. Or so others. this is the question that we together all must introspectively ask. Are we building our house, our foundation on the rock or on the rocks? Is it mm. on the sand or is it on Christ? So transitioning into this, Sean, good question. Someone out there right now, they're going through a season of singleness. Is that you? They're discontent. Hey, I've been there. Trust me. Where they are. Yeah. And they're walking through this and they feel they're alone. They feel lonely. They allow themselves to become in this depressed state or anxious state. Um, What advice would you give for someone going through that, that walk, that gift, but that, that tough, the grit of it, you know? So it's only a gift if you want it. Mm. It's only a wow. gift if you want it. If you want, if you want it. It's only a gift. It's a curse if you don't want it and somebody gives it to you, puts it upon you. Just That's good. So Sean. let's start with let's start with single people. You guys are my people. Do you know why? Wow. I was 30 years old. Three Woo! zero. When Jesus started ministry. Hey man, what? what? Come on. Hey, hey, where's my number? <laughs> there it is. Five. <laughs> <laughs> so He's my brother from another mother. But the same if father. If you can't tell, the we have the same dad. Father. Okay. You got <laughs> so, funny. Sean Rashawn. So, 30 years old, and I, w- I was single. You know, there's that quote, single for a season, and then there's single for a for reason. A reason. <laughs> now, look, some of you folks out there have lots of really good reasons why you're single, and if you don't know what they are, you might want to ask the people around you, because gotcha. chances are they know. They know mm, why you're single. Wow. But for a lot of you, the reason is it may not be your time. And so start by, by saying to yourself and accepting the reality that singleness can be really difficult. Wow. And it doesn't mean that something is wrong with you yeah. just because you're single. Come on. It could mean it's that really God good. has you in a position of refining you. And look, you may have heard some of these things, but look, do not. You are so worth it. Do not dismiss these because these are pearls of wisdom that if you rightly put them in the right spots, Mm. when it's time for you 
to engage in that relationship, they will shine radiantly. Yeah. And it'll magnify your beauty or your strength as a man. And it, it'll just put you in a greater position to win in marriage and to Come live on. a life of love for God, for family, and for Praise God. America. And so, it, yeah. so, so another thing is, one, accept the fact that there's not something wrong with you because you're single. It's, it's not really a disease. Good, it's yeah. not a sickness. It's, good. it's just a season. A season. And that's a big difference for yeah, a lot of people. Because sure. they, if you feel like an outcast when, let's say you're single because you just haven't gotten married yet. Yeah. Well, let's say you're single because you were married and it didn't work out and you divorced. And you go to these functions at your kid's school mm-hmm. or you go to a Christmas and you're alone and everybody else feels like yeah. they're happy. Ah. They're great. One, I've been there. realize, realize I had the luxury of serving people as a marriage counselor before I was ever married. Mm. And so I got to the place where I did not want to be married yeah. unless God gave me the woman and God said it was the right thing because I had seen so many people marry. Yeah. And people say, oh, it's not the wrong. You can't marry the wrong person. That's 100% wrong. You can absolutely, unequivocally marry the wrong person God did not intend you to marry. Wow. Just like you can buy the wrong car that God did not intend you. True. You can, we can all make decisions outside of God's will. Yes, yes. But when you're married, you've got to figure out a way to make it work if possible. Mm-hmm. And so... Remember, you want to wait upon the Lord. Ask Him to renew your strength. And I can give you some other really practical technique tools. Will that help Mm -hmm. you? Will that help some of the folks? Yeah, yeah. Give them a couple solid nuggets, man, Man. that they should. All right. So one, schedules are amazing for single people. (laughs) Amazing, amazing, amazing. Look, do not, do not. What did I say? Do not. Do not wait till Friday and Saturday night to try to figure out your weekend plans. Bad move. Bad move. That includes lots of ice cream, Mm. unfortunately, probably maybe some alcohol and some bad TV shows or something. Look, bad things happen when you don't plan in advance to succeed. That's really good. So plan in advance to succeed on your weekends so that you have something to do outside of your flow. Let me caveat to that just really quick. Just drop a little bombshell in there. This is what's so great about the Holy Spirit, too. There's been times where when I was in my singleness and I didn't plan, I didn't schedule. But when it got to the weekend, I was so, sort of vulnerable and open to people oh, pleasing. Man. And when that girl would text or that guy would text for me to go out to a club or go hang out with the wrong peeps. That's and good. I wasn't listening for the Holy Spirit. I wasn't, you know being attentive to the voice of God, I would compromise my convictions and go after people, go after those crowds, and I would stumble in my singleness. And I would say that is standard for most people that are single. Wow. Because if you don't come with a plan, a a lack of planning is a plan to fail. Mm. You know, failure to plan is a plan to fail. Yeah. And so I say the same thing is true. When you're going to go into battle, and make no mistake about it, singleness is a warfare zone. Like the devil's trying to take you out to compromise with sex, Mm -hmm. with with what you do with your time, with the movies and the social things that you look at and watch, the people you're around. He will try to get you to lower the bar because you're not living to the standard of where you want to be yet. Wow. So just remember, it's a season. Remember, you want to schedule. Also, realize, realize, realize it's a time to get full, F-U-L-L, full, full of God, full of friends, full of knowledge, Full of life, wow. full of risks, and so let me back That's it good. up. That's good. So full of God, you have, you you'll never get another time. I look back at my single years, and I remember this very clearly. I said, "I'm not going to have this much time. I need to make better use of my time." God, and I really thought about that, and I look back and I thought I could have made way, way better use of my <laughs> time when I was single. I have kids. I've got to practice. I've got, got opportunities and people I serve. Friends like you, and we hang out. Yeah. And and I had way more time. Look, I read way more books when I was single than I ever thought about reading. Really? I memorized That's scripture good. almost on, every now. day. I read books. I, I, I had a book every week. Three, Resting four, at going. his feet, just learning. And look, I need every bit of that knowledge right now in my marriage, in my career, wow. raising kids. And and you have this, this vital opportunity as a single person that you are not bound, you are not indentured to somebody else at this moment, mm. that you have the freedom to Come become on. and grow in any area. If you want to become a videography, man, True. take a class on your Tim. With Tim, our <laughs> videographer guy. Our videographer. <laughs> and if you want to be great at loving people and at working deals, True. then take a class on business. So good. There's so much that you can do. If you want to be a Bible, know more about the it's Bible, really then get into a Bible study. 
Develop friendships. Yeah. Now, here's the next thing. Community. Friendships. Community. Oh, my word. You That's have final. so much opportunity. And listen, pay any price in this season to know God. Pay any price. Wow. With time, with resources, with what you say yes to is just as important as what you say no to it's really good. in this season. So, so really become full. Now, I said, I said, take risk. You said, wait a minute, wait. Uh, I took risks as yeah. a single man. Yeah. I mean, take <laughs> healthy, godly risks. God. Go travel somewhere you would never travel with your family. True, true. Spend a little more money if you've got it and go do something that is outside the grid that may be a dream for you. Go visit somebody in yeah. Israel. Take a trip to it's Greece. really good because when you get married, you got it's responsibilities. It's going to be a little bit tougher homie. to do any You got responsibilities. So you enjoy. got a real budget. Enjoy. It's a gift. It's a gift. Singleness is. And so many times, look, singleness has been looked down upon in our society for generations. Mm -hmm. Or it's been exploited by the media and pushing you to do things wow. that are selfish and that take advantage of other people. Look, it's all backwards. Your single years are the vital, most vital years you'll have Great. to grow and to become in a direction that you and God get to decide. True. You and God True. alone. And you can fly as far as you want to go in, in those years love so it. that, and the next thing, you are focused on becoming the one in pursuit of the one. Well, becoming the one. And that, that flips the flow of how you do everything. You reverse engineer the, there's something wrong with you too. I've got so much opportunity. My single True. friends, man, they are, they, they can go here, here. I see a lot of single people. They come in and the wild thing is they come in and then they get married, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I help them deal with the, the insecurities got that it. they come to relationships with. Wow. I help them fill themselves with women. True. And they come in looking one way and this is no joke. Got it. If they follow the plan that we talk about, and everybody's plan is different depending on them, mm -hmm. they live. They leave more beautiful, like physically, True. emotionally. They radiate Christ. Look, here's two things in a I'm way hearing. that they don't even touch when they first come in. Here's for real. I love it, love it, Sean. And here's two big things I'm hearing from you. A quick, quick thing that you should keep in mind: either you have holes, or are you whole? A friend told That's me about good. that. Do you have holes? Can you hold what God is going to bring mm. in your future? That's good. And number two would be this. Are you being led by your insecurities? Are you allowing the spirit to lead you? A lot of us rush into relationships because our insecurity drives us there. That's good. Versus the spirit of God. So, yeah. That's a big, being, so that's a really big, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on both of those. Mm -hmm. So the other one is when you're single, ask what the areas that you're struggling, like identify the areas that you're struggling in. Got it. So you said insecurities, not feeling like you're good enough or yeah. adequate. Well, that's a great start. Well, well, if you deal with those when you're single, guess what you get to come into marriage with? Wow. You get to Sweet come goodness. into marriage with a measure of wholeness. With, and, and then you also, you also, this is huge. We all have a love magnet. You change the attraction of people that you attract when wow. you change your love magnet. It's good. Because you attract people that meet your deficiencies, and they complement your strengths. That's so who we good. attract. So if you have a lot of wounds from childhood or from a previous relationship where you were abused or you don't feel like you're good enough, or maybe you're the guy that is abusing them, or maybe you're the person that does take advantage yeah. and you hurt people when you date them, well, then both of those will attract certain people. But when you give those to God and you really get, I love therapy. Look, I love coaching. I love therapy. I love Jesus. Yes. And I think all of them go together wow. in the same flow. Together. And, and if you need to get into therapy, go see your pastor, find out a good one. Look up online, you know, our new vision counseling. That's part of what we do. But wherever you're at, find people to talk to. You are worth the time, the effort, and investment True. to dive in deep to these issues. Because look, at this is why people marry after they see me mm. or they see our team is because they come in with all these deficiencies and they're attracting people they don't want to be with wow. that they're not good they're not healthy and the relationships keep self-destructing wow come but on, when man. they deal with when a, when a man steps into his calling and instead of taking advantage from women and he starts to value and he starts Love to contribute them. yeah and he starts to treat them like a sister True. like a like a queen and somebody that's the highest value yeah then he will start to attract a woman that is a Proverbs 31 True. versus the, the one that's on the street corner, you know, trying to call the guys. Yeah. Was that exactly. Proverbs 7? Proverbs. <laughs> no. And, <laughs> and there, there's two different Proverbs women. There yeah, are. Two one different that calls and, and the lips deceive, the other one, the lips bless. Got it. And then same thing with women. 
they literally do physically change yeah. in the way they, they, they dress, the way they carry themselves. And I said, look, you come in and you let, man, if you have like a beat up old car, like a Gremlin or like a beat up old Corolla, whatever that is for you, you can let anybody drive it. You don't care, True. man. It's, you don't even have insurance on it. You don't even <laughs> care if it gets impounded. Save you money. Yeah. Get it out the driveway. <laughs> now, Sean, if Sean, you had, but if you have a Mercedes. Yeah. A Mercedes. If you have a Mercedes like what you drive, like yeah, you know, right. I do not. S class D You know me. You know I don't drive a Mercedes. <laughs> I know he doesn't yet. But but if you drive like a G wagon, something real nice. Gotcha. That's worth about one twenty, one thirty. Got it. You're not gonna just let anybody get the keys, and that's the kind of value we need to understand that God puts upon us. Love it. He doesn't want Come anybody on. to just take us for a ride. Yeah. He wants us to be very cautious with the keys to our heart. That's come on, bro. That's a that'll preach. You like that? Love it, love it. So Sean, good transition point. I'm thinking about just single people right now as we transition into married folks okay. and people who are struggling with their first few years of marriage. Maybe you'll even have some nuggets of people who have been in marriage a long time, but they're suffering, they're going through so much pain and anguish. But let's let's talk about this real quick. I'm single. I'm having a hard time staying pure. What are some practical things they could do to stay pure or any just nuggets you could pour out to them who may be struggling with this, whether it's pornography or it's, you know, just with their, the girl they're dating, a future bride? Sure, or, yeah. I had this come up recently. I actually have this come up every week. Really? Purity is such a big deal because if you watch TV, if you look at social media, if you talk to your friends, if you breathe and you live in America, it's outdated. Wow. Everywhere except for the Bible. That's good. It's outdated everywhere except for the creator of you and me and this world that we get to live in says that the best, best, best plan is for you to stay pure so that when you have that person that you've committed, then rightly you can uncover that flower and it will bloom in a way that adulterating and fornicating it never will. Wow. And, and something else, this is not an issue just for, regrettably, it's not just for single people. Married people still struggle with this profoundly, especially wow. pornography and, and infidelity. You know, if you read studies, one out of three men cheat. Mm. Some studies are higher, some one are lower. One out of three? Some studies are higher, some wow. studies are lower, so I split the difference. They say one out of three men cheat. And I just want you to think about your value. So as a single person, it matters what you fill your mind with. Mm. Because I can all day give you behavior modification techniques and strategies that are great and are excellent. But if you're filling your mind yeah. full of garbage, if you're listening it's to good. secular music that talks about sex, talks about drugs, talks about more sex, that, that's kind Crazy. of what it is, and talks about the way you treat people and it's it's not yeah. good, and then you flip that and you listen to Christian music that yeah. inspires you, that makes you feel good about yourself, you fill your mind full of God's Word, it's good. you read books, podcasts, social media posts, there's some great ones out there, yeah. and you fill your yourself so full of life and you realize that some of your friends have hit their expiration date. Wow. And they're making you sick and they need to go. They've hit their expiration date, like food has an expiration date. You might be able to get get by a few days. Yeah. But I tell you, you don't want milk after it expires. You will Come get on. sick. Be spoiled. You will be sick. You'll let off an and odor sick. instead Man. of an aroma. And it will stink and poison your life. Yeah. So some of those friends have to go. And then there, there, there's some other friends. That God's wanting to bring in. You may or may not know who these people are. It's okay if you don't. Because there are churches. There are social sites. There are different ways to commit and connect to people. Yeah. In community groups. Visiting churches. You know, I left one church when I was single. Because I was struggling. There was really nobody at this church that was single. I was in leadership. It was a great church of the harvest at the time. Awesome. And God called me Love to go to this them. other. It was a really little church at the time. It's called Life Church. Uh-huh. Now it's like a mega church. But yeah, before, you know, huge. Craig Rochelle was just a normal dude who was still buff. But still buff. He said, go there for relationships. I heard it clearly. Go there for relationships. And I did. We had a life group. I made friends. Wow. And we really had a really good thing going. And then I got married. But mm. we had a really good thing going. Where'd we, you and your wife meet, by the way? We met at Life Church. There we go. I agreed and there she came in. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord had a plan. The Lord had a plan. What the better Lord. place is it to, than to meet your wife at church? Come on, Amen. Come and on. So I would just say one of the ways to deal with not looking at porn is to fill your mind so full of the goodness of God through all the ways mm. that he's given you. Yeah. It's the same question. Of, what do, I'm 500 pounds. What do I do to lose weight? Hey, bro, start eating different. 
Got it. Come on, get on a schedule of how you can do that. The other one is get accountability. If you don't have a man in your life as a guy or women in your life as a woman that are holding you accountable women of and faith. faith and building a relationship that you guys can scale and soar together, yeah. then you're missing out on one of the vital components of the body of Christ. It's good. Which it's is good. supporting, loving, and going this way together. Wow. So what I hear you saying, Sean, one, scripturally, it goes back to as a man thinking in his heart, heart so, so is he. Is he. So what we feed ourselves is what's going to come out. Amen. Amen. You hear that, guys? That's some great insight, great nuggets. And speaking on, if you had to, you see couples all the time. All the time. What would you say if you only had 15 minutes to talk to a couple, but you knew that it would be detrimental to the future of their relationship? What are some things that you would tell them? What are some things you would speak over their life, over their marriage, over their future family um, that they should grasp and hold on to. That's really good. So first I want to say every couple is different. So mm. I would for sure get to know their story and them because I do not have a template that I use for every couple. I just get to know them uniquely as they are. And then based upon that information, I go from there. Got so, it. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit you on some high levels. And I'm going to drill down in a few different areas because I know that there's those of you listening that can really relate to some of what I'm about to share, especially the first one. Got it. So if I were to take Got all it. that I know, all that I know, 25 years of marriage counseling, all the things, seminars I've done, and people I've been you know, relating and helping, I would say I could distill it to this one statement. Focus on how God can change you and not your spouse. Mm. Because, because listen, mm. when you focus on how God can change you and not your spouse, then you've taken all the power from those people around you and you get it to a place where you can influence and control and then you can give that power to, to God, God, God to change you. So good. But as long, look, as long as I expect you to change, as, if you're my wife, Tanda, and you're a beautiful blonde and amazing <laughs> athlete and, yeah. and a gorgeous, if I expect you to change before I make the move to wow. change myself, I am in prison to your decisions. And even worse than that, I'm not even prison to your decisions. Mm. I'm in prison, which is even worse, to my perception wow. of your decisions. So if I'm in a bad mood, then you may not, whatever you're doing may not hit me right. Scott. Even if you're trying to do the right things and you're being kind and encouraging, yeah. I may be like, why are you being sarcastic? Why, mm. why do you, you know, like, mm. like you hear this, like I might say to my wife sometimes, I say, man, those jeans are great. Did my jeans not look good yesterday? <laughs> but then sometimes she might say, you know, when it's a different time of the month or, you know, she's in a different mood, she'll say, thanks, huh? That's, thanks it's for noticing. Awesome. That means a lot. So it really depends. So that's a big one. Got it. Another one is, this is, this is so big, guys. Man, for, for guys, guys, I'm talking to you and a few of you women, I'm talking to you. Listen. L-I-S-T-E-N. Listen. Slow to speak and quick to listen. Hear, to listen. Look at these. What are these right here? What is this? What is this? What <laughs> are I'm, these? I'm preaching to myself right here, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. This is, Love this is horizontal, co co horizontal <laughs> conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I would say learn to listen and not just hear their words, mm. but this is what exceptional listeners do. Wow. You go yeah. beyond the words and you see, and then when you see, you hear their heart. Wow, that's beautiful. And look at Say that again. So instead of just listening to the words, go be, when you go beyond the words, you begin to see something different. When you begin to see, then you can hear and you can see their heart. Love it. And when you hear and you see their heart, you can love who they are because everybody's not an excellent communicator like you. Yeah. And they can't oh, verbalize you know what that. they have. In faith. Insecurity. You are. Our faith. <laughs> I gotta you are. Okay. <laughs> faith. Faith. That next word. Okay, <laughs> we, got a, we got a spot open at 10 a.m. tomorrow for counseling. Okay, good deal. I'm there. <laughs> we'll help you out. Seriously. But My insurance you, is... Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, we okay. got you, okay, man. Okay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> okay. He's laughing, but I already got it set up. <laughs> as soon as the leaves here, he's going, to, he's going to get some help. Uh, emergency. Funny. Emergency. <laughs> well, one of the things is when you, when you listen to the heart, you unlock something that will never be available wow. any other way. For it's example, good. this is great. All you fellas, this is where you tune in. I'm going to say the word sex. Now all the guys are listening. Sex, yeah, sex, they, sex. Attention. Attention. Woo. Ooh. They just woke up. A light turned on. A light turned on. What? what? <laughs> this guy is awesome. 
<laughs> so if you make love to a woman's body, you'll get about 10% of her. Wow. Hold on. If you make love down. to a woman's body, you'll get about 10% of who she is. Wow. If you make love to a woman's heart, she'll give you the other 90%. Wow. And that's, that's true for all of us that are available in any capacity to have an intimate relationship. If you love our hearts mm. and you see beyond what I can do for you, you know, a lot of people want to hang out because I, I have a lot of knowledge that can help and I business and yeah. relationships. And, it's good. And I get it. And I'm open to that. But when somebody really values me and we're able to like, you know, in our relationship and you and I see that you want the best for me and you care beyond what I can do for you. That really opens up a capacity in my heart of where I am your son's godfather. Yeah. See that godfather? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but hey, really, yeah. I'm your son, you know, and, and because it's opened up a different capacity wow. of my heart because I saw you listening of what I needed. Yeah. And, and Rashawn even took it a step further of, I believe that you should be called and going in these areas of the things that you're doing, like wow. writing books, you're yeah. inviting me into. Speaking it out, and, calling it out. And I think when you do that in relationships... You open up different opportunities. Wow. You, it's like going on vacation and never leaving your house. It's really it's good. That, it, it really is, guys. It is really that significant. One of the measurements that I evaluate people when they first come in is their body language. Mm. Because I love to measure, and, I, and people don't even know. It's just in my mind and what I observe. Is Couples come in, and they sit on opposite ends of the couch. So much so... That this is one of my, one of our counseling offices. This is a love seat. <laughs> Before I used to have a regular couch, and they'd be I'd be having to like look here, then look here because they were so far apart. Wow, I said, forget to you. So I have love seats in all my offices wow. now, but one. Nice. And they sit together. They sit, join them together. And they might be like over here, but by the end, they got the, like this. They got their legs <laughs> on each other. They sitting like this, you know. And you know what? I'm like, hey. And then then they can't, they're like, oh. They, they forgot. We've gotten so comfortable. We're like, I've been in the intimate wor world for, with them for a while, and so they're just comfortable with me. Sometimes people be like, "Oh, I for just forgot." Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, "Hey, hey, hey, no. that's." I feel yeah, good about myself now, right now. Love, yes. I mean, you're showing the love of God, yes. the way God. You know, people want to speak about, "Oh, you know, I hate this, I hate that." Yeah. Look, the best way Christians can show God's love is the way we treat our spouse and our family. Come on, pastors. Come on, come on, pastors. Bro. So many times I see pastors come in, and bro, it is so mm, crushing to me early on in my career mm -hmm. when pastors would come in when I was young because I had these idealistic expectations like a lot of you probably do for pastors. And then they, they, I would see the way that they would treat their families, and it shocked. Wow. Like I had to grieve my loss of my, my ideal of who pastors were. Yeah. Today, it's been, it's been decades, but... I'm able to see pastors just as normal True. people. Yeah. And I'm able to yeah. love and actually I specialize in helping pastors True. because of how uniquely I understand their world and what they need. That's really good. It's really so good, Sean. There's so much that that we can dial into with communicate. People want to just say high level and communication. Well, you need to listen better and you know, you just need to rephrase. And look, I teach those techniques. Fundamental. Fundamental. Yeah. One of the biggest mistakes of communication yeah. is believing it's already occurred. Is believing it's already occurred. So one of the biggest mistakes of communication is believing it's just happened. Therefore, it didn't happen right. at all. You thought you communicated something, <laughs> but that's, but so that's not what happened. There's times where I think my wife can read my, my mind. I'm guilty. And and there's times where, you know, I would, you know, talk it over in my own mind, but I wouldn't necessarily lay it out before my wife, what, whether it's going to the grocery store or whether it's going to be a part of somebody's tour. Come on, that hey, rhymed a little bit. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, it doesn't matter. But communication is key, bro. Yeah. And amen. being consistent with that. So And really huge. being intentional, intentional about how you communicate. Yeah. Because I'm great at communicating what I want. Mm -hmm. But it's an effort to cue, listen to what you want. Yes. <laughs> it takes... I, I, I'm exceptional. I'm a 10 out of 10. Yeah. I'm telling you what I need. Gotcha. <laughs> the area of growth. Is when I need to listen to what you need when yeah. I don't when I ain't about it. Yes. You know, like my wife, hey, you know, like right now she wants our son and they're trying to, you know, stage this coup because they want him to play baseball. And I'm like, I don't like baseball. 
And he, we played baseball. It wasn't a thing. And now they want to play it again. No offense. Hey, I have nothing against baseball. He's just also good at soccer, basketball, football. He's talented. He, Aiden talented. You know, probably yeah. track. You know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Your son's really t- drill. Oh, man. His son's so talented. <laughs> Him and my son played on the same team. They were the two best. Let's put it <laughs> yeah, that way. Yeah. And his son's yeah. a year younger than my son. Just throw that out there <laughs> no, for you. No, but they both build yeah. each other up. It's awesome. They do. And so... I just want to encourage you to to really dial into some of these things. Yeah. Because when you focus on how God can change you, it's an umbrella that God can cover your family with. Wow. It's and really it really good. is an umbrella of love that he covers your family with. So good. Well, guys, I think we're getting ready to wrap it up. Sean, that is a reservoir, again, of wisdom and knowledge that you just poured out to us. I don't know about y'all. Y'all may have to go back and rewatch or re-listen to this on the podcast. But, Sean, real quick, how can they reach you? If if they wanted to reach out to you via social media or maybe come into the practice for counseling, sure. maybe they're going through a lot with their family and they live long distance, but they mm. want to still connect and talk to you, see about yeah. some of your services. Sure. Share a little bit about that as we conclude, my man. I know when he says long distance, he literally means around long the world. Every time, I, every time I get on a thing with Rashad, I get something from Sri Lanka, <laughs> Dubai, or some cool place around the world. Come on, Dubai. Somebody, no, I'm just playing. Well, I remember Dubai. this one lady t- came in, and she was, her name was Princess Jewel. Princess like, Jewel. How cool of a name is that? Or okay. Prince this, or King. Like gotcha. The people that come in from your, your sites are just amazing. Crazy. So. Yeah. I would just say go to newvisioncounseling.live. That's newvisioncounseling.live. And we have a team of Christian counselors that marry biblical principles with cutting-edge counseling techniques. And they want to join you in your story, but just don't sit on the couch. We actually jump into your story with you and partner with you to succeed. And we do that through helping you discover what better looks like for you. And then we equip you with the tools to create it. And so we just don't leave you hanging with knowledge, but we meet you with expertise and functional tools and resources that truly will change your life. Wow. And so go to those websites. You know, we also have a a New Vision Counseling OKC and that's our handle for Instagram and for our Facebook page as well. And this brother right here is the one that got me in tune with doing these kinds of things and he encouraged me. So find, you you probably can't find a Rashawn because that's spectacular. But maybe Ah. you can find somebody in your life that can encourage and inspire you that you just dream together because doing this for me yeah. is like a, a big five hour energy drink which yeah. i don't drink but let's say it's a big True. coffee or some keto drink that bombs me out yeah. makes me go nuts for totally. jesus hanging out with you is like that so find people in right. your life as a married or single person that are going where you want to go yeah. or are where you want to be or inspire you to do one of the two. That's so good. So good, Sean. As, as you hear what he's saying, y'all, we all can do better in the department of love and loving others and walking with them. So, yeah, find that community. Amen. Reach out to Sean. If you have any marital issues, if you're struggling in any department with relationships, and he will pour into your life. His team is here. They're amazing. Uh, you will not want to miss out on an opportunity to have a godly counsel. You know, people speak out. It's much needed Amen. these days. So love you, man. Thank love you for too, being on the podcast. Woo! Talk soon, guys. God bless. God bless.